What's going on, guys? Coach Matt and you go pro baseball.com. I'm here with the man, Matt Antonelli, first round draft pick. We played together in pro baseball. Huge YouTube channel, Antonelli Baseball, Instagram, Twitter, all the good stuff. Go follow him. In this video, we're going to talk about ex actually a video, an old video that you put up on your channel. Yep. I think it was Bregman at LSU, and you were talking about creating space. And it showed Bregman charging the ball, stepping back. I just want to talk about the whole thing of creating space when fielding and also timing in yep. regards to fielding. What do you got? Okay, so I think this is a huge part of fielding. There's a lot of important parts, maybe the most important. And uh, one of my pet peeves is when a player misses a ball and they say, I got a bad hop, right? Like you see that a ton at younger levels, right? It's like, oh, I got a bad hop. And then the next time, oh, I got a bad hop. I'm like, how many bad hops can we possibly get? Like the field isn't that bad, right? So um, you create the hop is the biggest thing. So when it comes to timing, you need to make sure that you're reading the hop and you are creating the hop. So what we want to field, do you have a ball on you? So what we want to field is we want to field either the short hop or the long hop. So essentially the short hop is just the ball that bounces right in front of your glove. And nothing can go wrong here because the glove and the ball are so close, right? There's no distance between that. The other hop that you want to get is the long hop. The long hop is when the ball bounces out there and I have enough space where I can see the hop and I can catch it at the top of the hop, right? You just bounce me kind of a, just a nice easy long hop, just fall right into the ground. Yep, right there, good. So that hop right there, where I can see the ball, I'm catching it at the top, all right? So an in-between hop would be one, actually I can borrow that again. An in-between hop is just in between the short and the long. And so the in-between one is the one where everyone blames the field, right? They blame the field because the ball bounces right there and they don't know, they can't step up, they don't know if they should go back. And so they just come at it and the ball hits them in the chest or bounces past them and they say, oh, bad hop. Well, the key is you've got to turn the in-between hop into either a short hop or a long hop. How do you turn an in-between hop into a short hop or a long hop, you have to either step up or you have to move back. So you can step up and pick the ball. You can drop step and create more distance so that you can see the ball and catch it. But you can also vary the timing. So if I'm moving into a ball, right? So I'm moving into a ball and I'm reading the hops. And in my mind, I say, oh no, that's gonna be a short hop. Then I have to get a little bit quicker. Or maybe I have to slow down for a second and let the ball bounce further. So those are all the keys. Read the ball, read the hop. Two things to think about, or a couple things to think about to get used to this, is when you're feeling the ball, the first thing is you gotta get to the right of the ball. So if I get to the right of the ball, if this ball is rolled to me, the, the key that we use is get the ball on your left ear, okay? So any ball, I wanna get the ball on my left ear. So go ahead, roll the ball right at me. My first step should be to the right so that I can move back to the left. What did going to the right do? Well, yeah, it helped my momentum go to first, but what it did, what it really did, was that when I get to the right of the ball, I can now read the hops of the ball. If I'm straight on, will you just do a couple bounces to me? If I'm straight on, that's hard to read the hops because I don't have an angle on it, right? And so it just looks like a ball bouncing up and down, but I can't tell how far the bounces are. So if that same ball is bounced, but I get to the right of the ball, right? So I get bounced that again. If I get to the right, now I see not only up and down, but I see space in between the hops. So if I wanna time it up, I have to be able to see the hop. So that's, that's the first thing that you wanna do. And so how do you practice that? Get to the right of the ball, but then get in tune with the hops. So say we were doing a, a, a fungo drill, right? We're just hitting the fungos. A couple ways you can do it. You can hit the ball to the player, and I have to read the hops and tell the coach how many hops were there, right? So the ball's hit. I get around it to the right side. I field the ball. I say three hops. I say two hops. I say four hops. Doesn't matter, right? That gets the player in tune with the hops and actually counting the hops instead of just fielding. A lot of players don't even know they're supposed to get certain hops. They don't even know. They just see the ball hit and they try to get in front of the ball. That's it. So you got to read the hops by counting the number of hops. The next drill you can do is coach hits the ball and coach says, we got to catch this ball in two hops or we got to catch this ball in three hops. So the ball's hit. I get to the right. I read the hops. If coach says catch it on two hops, and it's gonna bounce the third time, I need to step up 
to catch that ball. So that's working on turning the in-between into a short. I can also drop step. So if coach says, hey, got to catch this on two hops, and he hits it and it only bounced once, and I got to let it bounce a second time, I've got to drop step to create distance. So that works on it as well. And then the last drill you can do is players have to get used to picking balls the short hop right the short hop should be easy the ball is bouncing right there but if you never if you never work on fielding the ball when it bounces short like that then you're not going to be comfortable fielding a short hop so all you do as a coach is you just flip a ball up and let the player come and catch the short hop right and i'll demonstrate even an easier way to do that real quick what i just did just dropping the ball you can get in a hundred reps a thousand reps all you do is get into position and you're just going to drop that ball and you're going to try to pick the short hop so that's a short hop right there you can do that a million times and feel comfortable picking it and you notice when i did that it wasn't i'm not swinging from the shoulder i'm not flicking the glove like that i'm just moving through the ball this way i'm trying to stay on line with the ball so none of this not from the shoulder not flicking the glove and that's how you get your mechanics down. Let's actually get into the how to drop step and how to step up. And I'll have you bounce a couple balls for me. One thing that I can add real quick, I, I heard this explained really well, and it just adds on to what you were saying as far as being able to read the hop straight on versus off to the side. And the way I was shown is if you're looking straight on at this camera, this right here looks like one ball. That's the perspective you have. But if you take an angle to it off to the side, now you've got more depth perception on this ball right here and you're seeing more of it so that kind of I just thought that was a great way it was explained Chris Marlowe shout out Chris Marlowe that was really good and actually that brought me that uh, one thing that came to mind when you said that is also think about I said get it on your left ear right one thing that that players will do of all ages is I'll say that and then they'll say okay I've got to get to the right of the ball right just say so you say hey get to the right of the ball so you can see the hops well how far do I get to the right of the ball right some players all of a sudden the ball's there and they start getting way over here and then they got to come way back and that just wasted time so my angles always got to be as sharp as they can be while still getting the right of the ball so that's why I use my left ear so left ear just means when the ball's hit and I go here, now the ball's on my left ear. If, I, if the ball's hit and I go here, that ball's right down the middle, I can't see it. So it's just one step, get my ear, get the ball on my left ear, now I can see the hops come and I work back through it. So it's really important. Um, let's talk about, we talked about stepping up, right? Stepping up and one-handing the ball. Really, really simple, I just showed a couple drills that you can do that with. Let's talk about the drop step real quick and I'll have you throw a ball to me. So with the drop step, the idea is that we're trying to create more space, right? Mo we were talking about this earlier. Most coaches and players, all they talk about is charging the ball, right? The ball is hit, go forward, go get it. You are allowed to go back on balls, right? So you can step up, but you can just as well go back, especially if you play the corners. So if you're playing third base, and again, this can happen in any position, but if you're playing third base, the third base is a position where it's a lot of one step, one step to my left, one step to my right, step up or <laughs> drop step back, right? And so you need to work on this if you're a third baseman or first baseman especially, but even in the middle infield. So let's, uh, you got a ball? So let's do uh, real quick. Again, I'm trying to create distance between the ball and myself because it's an in-between hop. I'm gonna turn it into a long hop. So if we do that, you can start off just real simple with a coach standing about 20 feet or so in front of you. And we're gonna just, he's just gonna throw the ball, kind of bounce it in here. And I'm gonna try to show you what it looks like if I back up, I'm gonna go a little bit further forward. So the, the mechanics of it is the ball is hit and I'm just gonna, if the ball's hit to my right, I drop step with my right foot first. I wanna play low to the ground. I don't wanna drop step and be up here. So I wanna drop step low. If the ball comes up, I come up and catch it like that. So drop step low here, and now I will shuffle with that, all right? So let's throw one right here. I'm gonna drop step, bounce back, catch the ball. Do that one more time. I'm gonna drop step back up, catch the ball. So that time I did two shuffles, right? And so again, the key is when I drop step, I wanna be low, I don't wanna be high. I wanna shuffle. Maybe that time right there, I realize, oh, I gotta shuffle a little bit more and then I can work up on the ball. But that's really easy to work on and then take it to fungoing. We talked earlier in the fungo drill about, it's not about just hitting these perfect backspin fungos because 
you can work on some mechanics, but you're not working on reading the ball. So when I'm hitting a third or first, I smash the ball into the ground, get a ton of topspin. That way the third baseman has to, oh, I got to step up or, oh, I got to back up for that. So that's really key. And the other thing that we talked about in the hands drill video is feel comfortable catching the ball with one hand. If you step up, it doesn't have to be a two hand play. In fact, it's usually going to be a one hand play because I can extend further with one than I can with two and I'm just freer. You know, if, if someone's going to throw me a ball and I'm going to catch it right here, you throw it, I catch it. You, I would never do this to catch a ball right there. It makes no sense. Catch the ball, bring the ball to your middle. Some people say, oh, but you got to transfer. You're going to be slow. Well, if I catch the ball here and I transfer fast, I still got to get my feet all the way set up to throw anyway. So just catch the ball, bring it to the middle, transfer, and then I throw it. So a lot of small details into kind of a simple play, but a lot of players don't practice it. Speaking of practicing it, the way I like to think about fielding too is almost like basketball. Like in basketball, if you just sat there and shot three pointers from the same spot on the court, you'd be really good at that one ball. But how many times in the game is that going to happen? You're going to have to do a step back, you know, a defenders in your face, yep. shooting this way or get past them and shoot this way, right? Don't judge my basketball skills. <laughs> fielding is the same way. Yep. You're ne probably never going to get the same ground ball. So never. you need to practice the way you're going to get balls in the game. Do those plays deep in the hole this way. Do them here. Get a little bit fun with it too, right? Mm -hmm. Like have some fun. Throw off of this foot when you're throwing, you know, because everything's going to be totally different. Yep. We, um, I like to break up our practice. You're going to do your routine first. So basically your fundamentals, right? So you do all the fundamentals. You do these type of small drills. You feel good. Now you take it into to the game. So it's unpredictable. Coach is going to smash balls at you. You're going to work on taking what you learn in practice, put it into the, the game, right? That's why the coach has to hit the ball a little bit firmer, change the spin up. So now I'm working on all those plays like you just talked about, but it's really close to the game. And then the last part is the creativity part, right? There's going to be a time in the game where everything's not perfect, right? Game is, is more chaotic. So in the game, you might have to make one of those plays where you go deep over here, you pick the ball and your only option is to pull one of those throws. Or you're coming this way and you pick the ball and your only option is to do one of those. But if everything is, is so like cookie cutter, okay, on this ball I come here and everything is you know thought out, well what happens in the game when you've got to improvise? Then you don't know what to do. And when you improvise without knowing what to do, that's when you throw the ball in the stands and you spike it, right? So try to break up your practices like that. Do the fundamentals, then make it unpredictable like the game, and then be creative. And kids like being creative. It's more fun um, instead of just being so like regimented with the same thing every single day. The game's got to be fun, that's for sure. That's when the young players lose interest in the game, so you got to keep it fun. That's what we're trying to do here at Hugo Pro Baseball and Antonelli Baseball. Check us out on YouTube, subscribe. I'll leave his link down below. You know where to find me. If you guys got any questions, drop down in the comments section below. We'll try to help answer them. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you in the next video. What do you need to be a great infielder? Okay, let's talk about the mental game because this is such an important part of fielding. And a lot of people don't talk about this. If a hitter hits a ball 90 plus miles an hour, the ball's gonna travel about 90 feet in a half a second. catch when my left foot lands. I get to the right, I brace, I go. So I'm gonna bring the ball here as my right foot starts to go to my left. take the ball out of my glove, my fingers should be on top of the ball. I don't take it out like this. I don't take it out like this. I'm on top of the ball right here. But it's not just about fielding the ball again. It's about fielding the ball properly every single time.
If you're just gonna wait for your team to practice, you're not gonna be a very good fielder. If you're just gonna wait to field at practice when your coach actually does fielding practice, you're not gonna be a very good fielder. If you think you're gonna get great fielding three to five balls in infield outfield, you're crazy. You've gotta field a lot. And so you've gotta field before practice, you've gotta field after practice, you've gotta be able to do it on your own. Don't just wait for somebody to say, let's go practice infield. Go grab somebody and say, let's practice infield.